Cease of the team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got another episode of Chart Talk coming at you. We're dealing with some summer trading right now, but the market is continuing its little bounce off lows in this bear market rally that we're experiencing. Ben, how are we doing over there? I'm doing good, my friend. No complaints. No complaints. Some of this summer market, you know, it's tough to deal with. A little slow out there, but definitely still some opportunity between the weeds. You just got to look for it. Um, so without further ado, let's jump right into the market outlook. All right. So uh, last week we saw you know, the market finally bottomed out, finally caught that bounce area off that 360 support in the S&P. And now we've continued to bounce. We're about 30 points higher. We're trading around this 390 range. And now it becomes, you know, almost flag or failure time in the market. So if we want to continue the bounce, we want to see this 380 area held. Um, I'm anticipating we see some more digestion in the form of selling and a downward move tomorrow, but I'm hoping and kind of positioning myself for a bounce off this 380 area. Um, so that's what I kind of think is going to happen. Uh, I'm the you know, most simplest uh, explanation. Uh, some sectors, we're starting to see some individual sector strength, which is really nice to see after we've kind of had such a mishmash, you know, besides the energy sector, which has been going crazy this year, everything else is, you know, sometimes uh, relative, relatively strong in tech, sometimes it's not, but now we're starting to see more concrete price action. Um, that's giving me some confidence. And I want to start with healthcare. That's looking great. We see like the humanities of the world, uh, very, very strong. Cigna, very strong trade around all time highs. These names did not pull in that much and they're back to all time highs. Uh, and we look at the XLV, which is the healthcare sector. Uh, we just see the strong price action since we bounced. And if you notice, it started to bounce before the market bottom, which is always a good sign. Um, from there, I like the solars a lot. Here's EMPH. Um, we're seeing a lot of strength uh, out there. Watching this one up through this 220 area. And um, what was the one that's going crazy today? It was this JKS, Jinko Solar. Um, this is just coming out of a beautiful base here. Uh, continued strength. And then first solar is another one in that sector. We see it kind of making a turn, turning off these 60 lows, trying to turn the corner, you know, up through the 76 area could get very interesting. And, uh, the last thing I wanted to point in on is, is energy. What's going to happen with energy, uh, is the top in, or is this uh, an area we bounce at? So, you know, it kind of had that exuberance move up to this 94. I'm looking at the XLE. Had that exuberance move uh, in the beginning of June. And since it's fallen pretty hard from highs. Now it's tagged this very important support area here in the 70s. And now it's trying to get some support. So now the number one question is, does it pivot here or do we turn higher? And we look around at some of the charts in that sector, you know, Exxon, Oxy, they're all looking very similar. They're, they're trading right around these major pivots. Uh, and, it's, and it's, you know, will they hold on and bounce? Or will they, you know, bounce and then set up for a bear flag and continue lower? So those are the few things I'm kind of queuing in on. Um, I'm going to send the screen back to you, sir. So I always think it's funny. And for those who don't know, Shake and I both write a newsletter every weekend. I write the big picture, focus on the major markets, and then Shake writes the Shakedown, which focuses on the best swing trade ideas for the week ahead. And again, I don't read his newsletter before he publishes it. I don't, he doesn't read mine. But it's always funny, or not funny, but it's coincidental where both of our outlooks tend to be the same, where you were looking at the SPY, you know, kind of in the short term bouncing potentially to this 420 area in time. And I was looking kind of the same thing, where if, you know, given nice. this, this little break then that we've had, that's like the next kind of line of the same, where if we can get up to 420, we can push above it a little bit. It'll start to confirm that we're moving out of this very broad breakdown stage that most of the major markets and major sectors have been in, separate from energy, except recently. And shifting out of that breakdown stage into more of a base or range bound market and the range that we would be in 360 to 420 in the spy is a significant percentage range in itself where it's not like we need that run right back to highs 360 to 420 you know is, is a solid you know 10 15 percent range where if we think back to a few years ago maybe pre-pandemic the spies trading range for the year could be 10 or 15 percent and we're getting that in a few weeks um, or months at a time so Definitely, it, I, you know, my opinion is we kind of shift into this more, more of a base, um, broadly speaking. Again, the 10-year, we've been kind of comparing it to energy lately, where energy had this, again, as Sheikh mentioned before, this dramatic run-up this year, nearly you know, 100% increase into like that kind of capitulation to like major, major resistance. And it's slowly started to fade. And, and I you know, kind of have a feeling that the 10-year, 
we're kind of starting to see the same thing. You know, it had this dramatic run up percentage wise. It's gotten this kind of last little push. And for now, if the trade is going to fail, you know, the 10 year will kind of come down to 2.7 and it'll start to roll over. And that's kind of like what energy has done recently where it's kind of pulled back into this major support area. And now it's, it does this area hold or does it continue kind of aging over lower? Um, you, again, you kind of touched on healthcare, which has been one of the strongest sectors recently. I'm gonna pull up just the um, BHT really quick. And we can see how, again, going into last week, you had that major breakdown down through support with most major sectors and healthcare is already kind of showing us similar to what you and I are looking for in the SPY broadly, where like this 245 is at a you know, kind of same 420 equivalent in the SPY where it's, it's gotten there very quickly, but some have lagged. And one that we probably want to shy away from is the material sector. And the material sector looked phenomenal for the last six, you know, six or so months, just flagging up here at all time highs. It recently broke major support and has not really bounced at all when the market has you know, kind of really caught a bit and bounced this last week. So this is one that like I would really avoid. This almost kind of reminds me if you think back, you know, Boeing pre-pandemic where it based out, um, let me just get this chart up, for the better part of the year. And again, even we were looking to buy this up to 400, it looked amazing, all-time highs, and it broke the support. And once it broke that's key, you know, major level of support, that year plus long base, it got that little bounce back into support. It became resistance. And then obviously with the pandemic and what was going on Boeing, the stock obviously got destroyed. But I don't expect the entire material sector to do that. But it's just a, like a reminder of when major support breaks, this is not really the one we want to kind of rush back into. But some of the stronger ones like healthcare or, or solar, as you mentioned, is probably going to be you know, a better spot to, to focus on. All right, I love that. All right, so shake on the Love it when we're on the same page over here. Send the screen back. Yeah, now you, back. Can, you can put your screen back up if you like. Okay, what are we doing? Um, some names we like, top ideas? Yeah, yeah I think top ideas. Okay, good. okay, okay, okay. Uh, looking at a few things. Let me get back to Sharon. So I mentioned this JKS. Uh, I think this is a beautiful chart for the longer term. I think this one's ready to continue higher from here, but right now you gotta be in it. Uh, but I think this this has a potential to be a huge, huge winner over the next few months. So I'm going to watch for a base in this area and eventual entry up through this 68.69. But I won't be doing anything with it tomorrow. But, you know, it's it's heavily on my radar. Uh, uh, I, I continue to like this Ulta. It's not ready yet. It's pu pulling in today. Great earnings. Um, really great numbers looking ahead in the future. Gapped up big time on the earnings. So now we just want to see this flag base out. And... Um, you know, I see a lot of people trying to trade this name right now, and it seems like it's just not ready yet. It seems like it's one of those that, you know, when we get a little too excited about a setup or mm -hmm. something with great earnings or something like that, um, people tend to over-focus on it, but before it's really ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of what I think is going on with this Ulta. I think this needs, you know, two, three, four more weeks of consolidation before we start to really get interested in it. Um, besides that, I was talking about the energy names coming off lows. Um, this is a gas distributors, NFE. So I bought some of this off support today. I'm thinking they they um, they at least bounce. I don't know if you know it wants to run to new highs, but I'm just looking to move up to this, this 48 area, and that's where I'm really just just a quick little 40 to 48 trade there against this 38 area. Um, what else? There's Kellogg. So Kellogg splitting their company up into three uh, three companies: plant-based foods, cereals, and snack foods. And they think they can sell their plant-based business for a big ticket number. So once that news came out, the stock began running higher on it. And if we look on a weekly chart, you know, this has been sitting at a huge base forever. So um, sometimes these, these type of stocks, they need catalysts to break higher out of the base. And that may be the catalyst it needs. So I'm watching this uh, 7125 area for an entry. Again, obviously, I'd like more sideways action here. But, you know, uh, you, you live with what you can get. So I'll keep an eye on that one tomorrow. Still, still need to give this name a lot of room. It's more of a longer term trade. You know, you got to give it down to the, 70, the 66 area. Um, from there, I bought a little bit of this Humana today. Again, we keep talking about healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Looks amazing. Uh, gave a really nice entry right here, but I didn't load up because you have to give it a lot of room at this point. And I have a feeling it gives me another chance uh, to buy more stock in this 455 area before it goes after this 470. So mm -hmm. I'll keep this one on a close radar. Uh, but, you know, through 470 triggers that macro trade, we see that huge resistance level it's got overhead. Um, again, uh, this NOC uh, defense sector has been strong. You know, look at this thing. It's just flagging on highs. 
last few months while the world is ending. Uh, but NOC wants the world to end being a defensive name. So I bought a little bit of this, this one right here through this 465 area. Uh, I think this one, again, I bought very little amount because I believe it'll give me another chance to buy in this area. I think the market's got to pull back a little bit. But from there, uh, last but not least, this APOG. Um, the manufacturing company, they, they're in the architectural space. But I was looking at their earnings, and they got their earnings up right here. So um, great numbers. We love when companies raise their guidance in a dramatic measure, um, you know, from 290 all the way up to 350 on, on the low end of range. So that one's looking good. From a technical perspective, I'd like to see it, see it give us an entry through this 43, the earnings day highs in time. Um, so I'll continue to watch this one set up. Probably not ready anytime soon, but good one to have on the radar. What you looking at over there? All right. So broadly for me, my big focus is more on just increasing my weekly contributions and just buying the broad market um, and the stocks I buy long-term. That's like my bigger focus right now. This really isn't the time where I shine trading-wise, but a few names that some members were mentioning. You have this Duolingo that I haven't mentioned last week. This big base has been forming. Kind of keep an eye on this like 100 to you know, 105 level. And you can see these green lines down here. Again, this is just highlighting the higher pivot low. So the buyer stepping up. You know, Stock got smoked, pulls back in, buyer step in, buyer step in again, and we're kind of tightening up that risk and event. You know, for now, you know, 105 is kind of the level, 106. We want to see if it can pull in and put in a higher pivot low above 80 and eventually be prepared to buy up to that base break. Again, you already went over Humana in wait, uh, wait, wait, back to Duolingo, back to Duolingo. So I started using the product and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's it's a really great product. It's really easy to use, really makes it easy to learn. Like I like so it's a language app. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going through the free trial. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Big fan. What, uh, what language are you trying to learn? Uh, we don't have to get into details. What are you like? <laughs> are, are you trying, trying to learn about? Russian? <laughs> yeah, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> oh, good. Come on, Jake. Give us one word, please. Uh, go on. Relax, relax, relax. <laughs> uh, it's a curse, but go on, go on. Oh, that's, awesome. Awesome. that's so funny. I thought I was an Italian, and I honestly got past like childhood. I'm like, just give me how to order pizza or something. But uh, that's uh, funny. So yeah, Duolingo, <laughs> keep an eye on. Humana, again, you went over in extensive detail. I will say Abby has had two phenomenal calls in Humana through this 440 area twice now. Um, so she's kind of like the Humana whisperer. And um, that's that's really it on my end. All right, see. cool. Send the screen back to you. And we got good and bad trade. All right, I got a couple of trades. I was short a couple of names last week as the market's rallying. Doesn't sound too good, but one idea worked out. Very well. Let me show the screen. Um, so we got the CF. A big shout out to Link. Lincoln. Uh, he called this one out right, right as the day opened. We have been looking at this, this topping pattern for in CF. Um, it's a, a agricultural stock. You know, it had a huge run up. Been very, relatively strong all year, but you know, a lot of these names have begun topping after their big run. So let's look at the intraday. We'd been waiting for the entry. It gave a little bit of pivot and it opened up so weak last, uh, last Thursday. And the market was rallying, but still, this was just showing incredible weakness. Um, here's the trade, you know, right through this 87 area was the trigger. And, you know, just covered all the way on the whole way down. Um, you know, didn't expect it to hit 80. 80 was my target for a swing trade. I didn't expect it to hit in one day. I think it was down <laughs> 10, 12% by the end of the day. 10% trade in one day. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, what can we, what, what, what can you do about some of these covers? Um, so then I covered uh, most of it, um, you know, the following day. I still have a tiny piece against this 90 area in case it wants to give me an opportunity to reshort. So that one worked out. And then uh, this LNTH did not work out. Stock's in a pretty drastic uptrend at this point. Uh, my thinking was it was ready to break this uptrend uh, to the downside finally. And so, you know, it was showing relative weakness the day before. So it was Wednesday. Uh, I shorted that CF on Thursday. This one, this one began on Wednesday. Market's ticking higher. This one's pushing lows. Grab the feeler. You know, goes for that low area again. Uh, what was this? Thursday. Bounces back. Holds the strength. I short a little more. And then I just see it just starting to pivot. I see a lot of buyers coming in. So I start covering most of my position here. Try to mitigate the loss as much as I can. And then when it broke higher, you see, I, you know, I covered it. Um, right in the 63 area, and I got out of the trade. So, you know, small loss on that one. No harm, no foul. Looks like it wants to continue higher now. That uptrend is pretty strong in that one. Um, that's it, Adam. What do you 
Uh, so I'm ready to get. What are you doing over there? Uh, oh, not yeah, much. Again, I you know, it's away for last week, so you know, no trading on my end, sending cash. Other yeah, than yeah, yeah. Long term stuff. So yeah, we're gonna get a book of the week. Oh yeah, start us off. If you want, I'll get started. I have the book Grit. This was actually recommended to me from a member, Bobby Moore. Shouts out to him for recommending this book. Honestly, super good. And uh, still going through it. They talk one part about um, like deliberate practice. And you mentioned this in some of the earlier lessons about like your football coach was like, you have to practice perfect. You know, this is like an older lesson you wrote many years ago that it just yeah. came to yeah. mind when I was reading this. And, the, and she refers to, um, it's a female author, that she's talking with this guy who's, who runs all the time, who's run for 10 years. And she talks about the 10,000 hour rule and 10 years experience and how that, you know, that kind of what the time it takes to kind of become an expert in a certain field. But when she's talking to this guy who runs, he's like, I've been running for 10 years and I run the same and I don't feel like I'm an expert. And she's like, well, you know, what are your goals? You know, how, and when you go off a run, what do you do? How do you train? You know, how do you stretch? How do you train? How do you, you know, what's your, the nutritional diet, all these things. And he's like, I do none of that. And she's like, well, that's why you're not an expert. She's like, you're going through the motions. You're, yeah, you've been running for 10 years, but you're not improving every time you run. You're not tracking your times. You're not doing any of those things. So no wonder why you're not improving. And I think it's very relative to even met, even old members, even some members that we have, where sometimes they'll get stuck in that rut. And it's like, well, where's your trading sync? Like, where's your review of all your trades? You know, what right. didn't work last month that you're improving on this month? And it's like, I don't know. And it's like, well, that's why. You could have been doing this for five or 10 years, but if you're not constantly doing that, you're just going through the motions consistently and you're, and you're going to just, you kind of plateau and they, they have like a graph where it's like the person who just is worse off, the person that gets to a certain level of experience and plateaus, and then the person who obviously continues to improve. And it's just finding those mistakes and improving on them, which is what we try to do in the, the monthly trading reviews. So that was, I thought right. was very relevant to more so what we do. Yeah. That yeah, was good. Uh, so I'm reading uh, this book called Safe Haven, Investing for Financial Storms. It's by Mark Spitznagel. He is buddies with Nassim Taleb, you know, the guy who wrote Anti-Fragile. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very dense, uh, just like that. Very, you have to read this one slowly, a lot of mathematical formulas. But it's all about whether you should be using or should not be using hedges in a scenario. And he goes into these great mathematical scenarios about uh, a, a pirate ship trip. Uh, I... Um, uh, an old merchant boat, like transporting goods across the sea and, you know, a pirate ship 5% of the time will clean out your whole, every, all of your goods and, merch, and merchandise and all that stuff. And it's like whether or not you should pay for the protection uh, to, me, yeah. you know, to, to ensure your goods make it across in time. And it's like, you know, and he, he just went into all these different theories about why you should or shouldn't in mathematical equations. Um, so still got something to do with this one, but definitely recommend it uh, if, you, if you're going to take your time and read it solely because it's very interesting. It's like, if you use a hedge, it should, you know, mathematically work, make over the next 20 years, you should be using that same exact hedge every single time. And if it doesn't work, the math doesn't work like that. You should never do it even once, no matter the yeah. scenario. Uh, so I feel like that's um, the hard kinda, part is like the, the consistency of it. And like, then it's like the one time right. you don't do it is the time where you're like, that's when I should have done exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and Taleb and Spitznagel famously both got super, super rich from shorting the market in the financial crisis in 2008. So uh, they're, they're like big black, oh, hero black swan too. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, is he pitching gold? So. I, I see the gold umbrella. Does he have like some like gold theory in there that he's like- No, 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 no. It's not even like, it's not even like, it's not. The interesting part about the book, it's not like buy treasuries or, or, or short gold. It's nothing to do with technicals like that. It's all like math and theoretical things. So it's a very different take on looking at hedges. It, it really makes you think. Okay. It's tough to get, it's tough to explain. Okay. Like what, is there any particular vehicles he's using as, is he using options to hedge? Is he? No, no, no. There's no like specific trading talk. Like, oh, okay. no, like buy or sell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I all. got you. Okay, okay. It's very theoretical. So Understood. it's, it's okay. very hard to explain without yeah. going into in depth in the lessons, but uh, you should, yeah, get this one. It's cool. You'll like it. Right. To... All right. Without further ado, folks, another week in the books. We'll catch you guys next week.